Hello, I'm Matthew No One, and welcome to my Thor Ragnarok review. Also, a new backdrop, so yeah, re rearrange everything. So, Thor Ragnarok is a pretty good action comedy with 40% action, 60% comedy. Now, a funny thing before I talk about this movie that this movie was like 80 or most of it was improv, which is funny that, that another movie that Disney owns, like, did not like that, that it was like 80% improv. Han Solo Solo Story. But I think it works here, unless that, well, what Han Solo, it needs to be that way, or not 80%, but this one can actually work, because it is pretty good like this, but I don't know about Han Solo, but it's, let's get right into Thor. Not talk about Han Solo, but just making that clear that some movies are good with improv, some movies are probably not, should not be improv at all. So, our movie opens up with Thor monologuing that what he's been doing over these past two years, trying to find the Infinity Gems. You think he's talking to the audience, but he's not. He's talking to a dead skeleton, and it also turns out that Thor is in hell. Not this hell. This hell. Yeah. One L. It's Nort mythology, so whatever. <laughs> Though, I guess, well, sort of their version of the devil, or... North mythology devil version. I mean, he captured him, like, from the beginning of the movie. He wants to destroy Asgard and initiate Ragnarok on it, which is the end of Asgard. Which is the end of Asgard. And he needs the power of the Eternal Flame to, like, do it. To achieve his full power. Like, Thor's like, Odin won't let ever let that happen. And Surger's like, well, Odin's not on Asgard. So, Thor was also stalling for his hammer to come by, and he defeat all his enemies. Which, this is a very coolest scene ever. Like, the most coolest Thor i ever seen. This is the best Thor, Chris Hemsworth, out of any of the other ones. Even the ones in his movies. Even what, what Joss Whedon did with Thor. Joss Whedon did with Thor. It's a little better than what we saw in his own movies, which is weird. Which he should be the best in those movies, instead of the Avengers movies. But this one is the best one. Taika Waititi did a great job with the Thor character. And making the hammer also look cool, because the hammer just looks, looks like a hammer. He just throws the hammer, and the, the hammer's just circling around, around the enemy, like, going further and further away, just hitting them. And he's just battling them, too, as, like, he dodges the hammer. He's like, nope, you dodge a hammer, you, you get the other hammer. It's just so cool. Well, he ends up defeating Surger and taking that, taking that big eyebrow of his, or he likes to call it his crown. This is a crown. That's an eyebrow. So Thor defeats Surger, goes back to Asgard. Woo! But when he goes back, Heimdall's not there. Guarding the Rainbow Bridge and like guarding like seeing it with a weird eye, which we think is the Infinity Stone. Possibly. It's the All Souls, which we know about from the Dark World. You never know. This movie you didn't get the eye gotcha out by Thanos. I'll see you in Infinity War! So yeah, Heimdall's not there. This guy named Scourge is there and he's like, I have to greet you for Odin or whatever. And Thor's like, he just chopped it off like, whoosh. Like, Come on! <laughs> he walks all the way there. He doesn't have like a, a Asgardian ship, whatever. Or like, yeah, it, I don't remember they had like weird spaceships in Asgard. Like, what the hell? Like, aren't they able to like medieval, like something like that? I don't know. So he goes to Asgard where like Loki Odin is hosting like a play of the last Thor movie. If you remember from the last Thor movie, that Loki was disguised as Odin. And trying to rule Asgard, but since Surtur was the one that told that Thor that Odin is not on Asgard, he decides to throw his hammer and then but put Loki Odin in front of it, and then he'll get hit like really hard because the only one that can actually grab the hammer is besides Thor is Odin because you remember from the first movie he picks up the hammer like whoever holds the hammer is worth the power of Thor. So Loki Loki turns back into Loki and decides to bring Thor to Earth where he can find Odin, and then we get. Da 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 strange. I know I did the Sherlock theme, but like they did have like an Easter egg to Sherlock. It was like Blaker Street or like something like that. I can't properly pronounce it. You know how Sherlock is two two one Baker Street. This is one seven seven Blaker Street. He could have done like like reverse one two two instead of like having like. 177. Better Easter egg than that. Well, with Doctor Strange's help, like, he could, like, he tracked down Ola and he, he found out he was in Norway, and he needs Thor's hair to, like, because it has the same DNA, and he can just track him like that. This is a great idea, because it, it knocks out all that dumb Earth stuff that we saw in the first two Thor movies. Like, the Earth stuff is boring, and Jane Foster is boring, and I like two broke girls, but Captain Denny's is not that interesting of a character. I like when she's like, is the focus of the story, not like when she's just like, not when she's like a side character and just making quippy jokes. It's like, let's cut out all that dumb earth stuff romance, like, you see, go back to Star Wars. Natalie Portman, just go back. Jane Foster, go back to Star Wars. <laughs> she can't even go back to Star Wars, just, just go back to my, let's, like, flashbacks. 
I don't know. Let's go back. And also, I like how, like, Strange is aware of Thor and Loki and Odin and all the Asgardians, but he doesn't care, but he knows that Loki is a very mischief guy, and he puts him in a hole for, like, 30 minutes. I've been falling for 30 minutes! Also, like that, the hammer on Earth was disguised as an umbrella instead of a dumb stick, like how in the comics, which I don't really understand why this is a stick, because an umbrella makes more sense. Don't forget your umbrella. And also, it was right that my own prediction, and I'll say that in my Doctor Strange review, that um, I didn't think that Doctor Strange would be in the whole entire movie. That's a small little 10 minute cameo, whatever, or not even 10 minutes, like less than 10 minutes, 5 minutes, well, 3 minutes, whatever, I don't know. But, and also having his help to get there quicker to Odin. So as they get to Odin, Odin is kind of like dying, and he's talking about like this is the end of him, and like Ragnarok will come. Thor's like, oh, I, I destroyed Sir, Ragnarok's not coming. Odin's like, I'm talking about something different, because like, there's another Ragnarok coming, like your sister, Hell which was a great reveal because we did not know about coming forward in this movie. We thought she was just like some evil bitch coming out of nowhere, but then like we found out like the reason why she came because of Odin not holding on to his life span or whatever, and then that's how she probably came. And Ragnarok will come like that because like since Odin imprisoned her, and then he knew that Hella was powerful, and then they had to lock her up. So yeah, Odin dies, and Hella's coming. She comes, transform. I love that scene where it's like. Boom. Yes, finally we get to see that. After three movies, we finally get to see that Thor just puts his umbrella down and changes his Agarian clothes, like how in the comic. Never seen that in the cartoon. I haven't gone through like search my materials a lot or assemble, but I know that a little tidbit. So, how will destroy the hammer? No Infinity Stone in it. Bye, hammer. I also like that she goes like she goes like kneel before your queen. Loki goes like I beg your pardon, because like. From the first Avengers, he goes like Neil. So they try to contact the guy that was scourged or whatever his name to open the Rainbow Bridge. And Loki and Thor go into the Rainbow Bridge, and Hela follows them and knocks them both out of the Rainbow Bridge. And she goes up to the the greeter system, whatever, destroys the Warriors Three or two of the Warriors Three. Again, those characters are boring. Even some of the Asgardian characters are boring. Just getting rid of the the boring characters like right away and making room for the interesting new characters. So, and like, recruit Scourge. Like, you look like a strong person or or smart person. So, like, like, it's like, okay. And also, Scourge will be like, I'm, a, I'm just a janitor. But, like, why recruit the janitor? And like, well, why kill those other two? Like, they didn't really attack her. Oh yeah, they were like, ready to attack her. But Scourge didn't. And that's why she recruited him, I guess. And also, that's why the guy that was playing one of the Warriors 3 is now Shazam. He just dies in this movie, that's why he's playing Shazam now. Perfect timing, I guess. We're not gonna see him anymore, so... Also, the Warriors 3 was not in the trailers at all, so... Perfect. So when she arrives at Asgard, like, all the Asgardian guards are prepared to fight her, and... Well, she does explain that she is the rightful ruler of Asgard, and... Well, the, the Asian Warriors 3, like, whoever you are, we're gonna, like, stop you, whatever. Like, <laughs> when she gets into battle, what I find really ridiculous is that she just moves her hair back and, like... Her crown appears like I was like what? Why can't she just like automatically do that? She does that. She does it all the time throughout the whole entire movie. What's the point of that? And also, I like another great scene with just action in it with Hella like just stomping all these guys guarding. I even though this is horrible, I still like it. Like she just stomping all of them. I also like it when she goes into the treasure room. She goes like the right Infinity Gauntlet. That's fake. Well, now we know that because Thanos has the left Infinity Gauntlet. So now we know one's fake, one's real. And also, that one had like, all the gems on it already, and they're like all white as well. So, throw out that right Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> like, she's, she's growing through all the treasury, too. Like, I think she goes to the test track. Like, I like that. I think she just says to the internal flame, that's old. That's new. She goes to the server crown or whatever, eyebrow, surger eyebrow, and then like, she, you see the painting of like, 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 of Thor and Odin and Nogi, like, they're triumphant over the years, or the centuries, or whatever, and she goes like, this is all fake, and like, she like, destroys it, and like, underneath all that painting is like, her and Odin, like, conquering galaxy, the nine round, like, she wanted to like, have, be the conqueror of everything, not just nine rounds, like, and Odin just wanted to be a noble and peaceful king after. After they did it, the country of the nine rounds, like, and then she didn't want that, and then that's when everyone turned against her, and she also was holding the Thor ham, th Mir Mirinor, I can't pronounce it right. That's how she was able to break it, probably. 
So that's how she'll be able to destroy it. I, that's what I think. And then she cracks through the ground, and that's when she sees her internal army, because, like, she is a goddess of death, and she has a giant wolf as well. So that's her story. So Thor ends up on this junk planet. I think the locals wanted to eat him. And then this scrapper named 142 wants him, too, to capture him, sell him off to the Grand Master so he can battle in a great tournament. So she beats them all up because, like, she wants him. So, obviously. Thor's like, thanks! And puts a shocker thingy on him so it so can't, like, go anywhere. So, Grandmaster, Jeff Goldblum, whatever. <laughs> His character's really great. He's pretty funny. <laughs> He's just very mesmerized by stores. Like, say, I'm the God of Thunder! Sure you are. Lord of Thunder, whatever you are. You, I need to go back to Asgard. Uh, Asgard? He's just making fun of him. <laughs> Actually, the Lord of Thunder sounds much more cooler than the God of Thunder. I, that is my opinion. It sounds really cool. So uh, Thor sees that Loki is also a guest, and like Thor's like asking Loki to get him out, and like I can't, I can't. Sorry, brother. Thor goes like to the Grand Master, like he's my brother, and Loki goes like I'm adopted. It's a reference to the Avengers. So now we get Thor going into the chamber where they put all the contestants, and then this is where we get to meet Korg, uh, the director's character, Taika Waititi's character. He's the funniest guy in this movie. <laughs> he has all the best funniest lines. Like it's just randomly funny. The way he just explains a lot of things. And like when he swings that that mic, the mic character, he's, he's just slicing things, and like it's just the way it looks is just funny. And like oh, they just kept his like I get why he's an original voice. They didn't alter it. It's just like and so he explains to, to Thor that like no one can defeat the Grand Master's big champion. Well, and Thor's like I can defeat him. Like we had a guy that, that was just like that. He, we call him Doug, and Doug didn't defeat him. <laughs> See like that. Like why call him Doug? Is not like an out. Their space name is just a lot of it is just like very random quippy stuff from this character. I like it. It's pretty funny. Also, Taika Waititi is like a comedic actor as well. So as like Thor is like trying to repair himself, like trying to get like a, get some weapons that he wants. He's also explaining his hammer that he had um to Korg, and like like it's the best thing ever and stuff like that. And like <laughs> Korg is like is that like in a relationship with that hammer? Like no, it's a hammer. It's a weapon. I liked it so much. Yeah, it does sound like you have an iteration with that hammer. And I and also Thor while he's in there, he sees Valkyrie. And also Korg explained that she's also she's an Asgardian. Thor's like, What? And that she's also a Valkyrie because she has a tattoo on her arm. And Thor tries to get her attention, like, Asgard's in danger, I need your help. And she goes like, I don't really care. Also I really like her character, like it's just like she's just really funny from the very moment. Like she also like very very mysterious, like her character. From this point and like as we get to know her, like it, she's likable. So now we get to main event time. I like the Stan Lee cameo in this one. He cuts Thor's hair, which is very fun. And when Thor sees the grand champion, it's the Incredible Hulk! Rawr! I give you your Incredible Hulk! Yes! We know each other. He's a friend from work. Oh, come on. Also, Loki is there, like, watching the vent. So as Thor fights the Hulk, Hulk gets a few first punches, and then Thor gets another few punches, and then, like, Thor tries to do something's coming down, big guy. Tries to do that, but then, like, we get another Easter egg to the Avengers. Puny got. <laughs> and then Loki's like, YES! THAT'S HOW IT FEELS LIKE! Uh, Hulk throws Thor, and, like, Hulk tries to, like, more smashing of Thor. We get, like, Thor, so we got a glimpse of Thor who's thunder power as Hulk goes for him, Thor just punches him, and then they're like at odds with each other, and then like the Grand Master sees like, Thor as like coming out as the winner, and he can't have that, because Hulk is his Grand Champion, and then he gives like that little shocky tasty thing, he knocks him out. So I guess Hulk put Thor in his room, and like Thor's asking like, why are you like this, and Hulk is like, Hulk is always Hulk. Also Thor's asking like, how would you get here? He says, Quinjet. He goes to the window, points at it, like, there, there it is. That's his ticket out of there, but... And also, Thor tried to explain that he needs to go back to Asgard, so... Come on, big guy! And, like, no, Hulk stays. There's also that little tobacco, like, People love you! I love you! I don't like Banner! Yeah, you do. You're Banner's friend. No, you're my friend! I like you more! You're the bigger, you're the stronger! Hulk is, like, still, like, no. Thor tries to leave, and he's like, nope, the shocky thingy is in there. 
You can't go. <laughs> Hulk is like laughing at him. Also, Hulk is like a baby in this. Like, if you didn't know, like, for, he's been like that for two years. So he's like a big old giant green baby. With, the way he talks is manner is like a baby. Giant adult baby. That's what he is. So while Hulk goes back to do some more fighting, a Thor connects with Heimdall, tries to see what the, he's up to. Like, since Heimdall can, like, see everything and go all over the galaxy and worlds. and So he connects with him like that. And then Heimdall explains that Hela is like taking it, took over all of Asgard and they, you, we need you to come back, we need our king. He now is the true king of Asgard, Hela is not the true queen of Asgard, she's just a tyrant ruler which Odin did not want to be anymore. She wants to be, that's why she was locked up. So Thor asks for help for to get that the Valkyrie 142 to his room, and once he finally does, so when she is in Hulk's room and like Thor is trying to explain that about Odin's dead and Hela's escape and I need your help. She explains that like she once fought Hela and her army of the undead and she they failed miserably and like there's no stopping her and it's like can't go back to Asgard anymore. Might as well just stay here. But well Thor goes up to her and like, come on. This is what Asgardians do and stuff like that. It's like, no she like, pulled back and like, no, no, I'm not helping you. It's like he takes the the shocking thingy that she has and like, releases it and then that's how he gets to escape. Also, I think this is where we get a taste of that. The background music, the, it's like a video game. It's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. It, it's really cool. I love this movie that has, like, it's, it's very bright. It sounds like a video game. It's also supposed to be like, very 80s, like Flash Gordon y, like Star Wars is. Like, this is great. Probably in my top 10 right now of like the cinematic universe movies. We'll see how Infinity New War goes. It's probably better. So, he jumps out the window and goes to the Quinjet, tries to activate it, and like, well, there's voice recognition or code recognitions, and like, Thor tries to like unlock it. Thor, God of Thunder, Thor, Strongest Avenger, something like that. And like, ugh, point break, which is another callback because Tony called him point break in the first Avengers. <laughs> He's like, damn you, Stark. And Hulk comes like, no, Thor, he tries to like convince him to stay, like, no, he, Hulk is willing to with none of his friends, and like, he wants Thor to be here, but uh, Thor is like, no, accidentally presses something, and it, it shows the clip from Age of Ultron, like, how Black Widow was trying to say to Hulk, come back, big guy, and then that's when he turned back into Banner. And I like that, I like this Mark Ruffles' performance in all of this, how he's just like a normal guy freaking out on an alien planet. It's just like, it reminds me of Nick from New Girl, just a little bit. I wonder if Mark Ruffalo has watched a bunch of Nick scenes from New Girl. I'm, I'm very curious about now. It's very similar, I'm just like, I just really like that. It was very similar to Nick, how Nick would freak a new girl. Thor explains that he's been the Hulk for two years, and then, like, Banner comes to the conclusion, like, if Hulk get full control over me, then then next time I turn into the Hulk, I might not come back. He's been like that for two years, and he, Hulk is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, but being the Hulk all the time. So, it's gonna be like a very harsh control over whose body is who now. Also, adding to the, the freaking out bit, like, he had, like, the same thing from earlier, I'm like, no, I, I prefer you. I don't like the Hulk. Banner's my, my friend. I love how, like, they address that in this movie, like, Banner and Hulk are two different people. This is was never done before in the Avengers movie. This is really great. I, will, I like it. I also like how, like, when, like, Thor needs to disguise because he's a fugitive right now, and, uh, and Banner goes, like, I need a disguise. He also has t Tony's clothes from, like, the Quinjet, which, like, I'll be Tony totally Stark. Thor's like, no, you don't need a disguise. Thor also explains, like, I need to, Banner, I need to go back to Asgard to, like, stop my sister. And, like, also need the Hulk to come out, so, as well. Even though I like you more, I need Hulk as well. Uh, 142 is helping them, because she can't drink away her past. She can't run away from her past. She can't, like, stop thinking about her past. Because, like... And if she's gonna die, then she's gonna die killing that horrible hag or princess that Hela was. And she's also not gonna stop drinking, because, oh, well, she likes it. Even though like, she's a really fast drinker in, that, in this movie. I'm just gonna call her Valkyrie at this point, because, like, so she shows that she captured Loki. So they figure out that they need to go into this portal called the Anus, which is, oh my god, it's a movie. This, so we need a stronger ship, and her ship is not that strong. But the Grand Master has some strong ships that can probably go through the hole. Valkyrie explains that she, the Grand Master has specialized codes that we can't go through for these ships. But Loki says, I have some codes and secrets that the Grand Master told me. So, so now we're using Loki's help. So Valkyrie, and like, I guess Thor tells Valkyrie to like, release Korg and the other people. And also, 
there's a thing that Korg was also saying about a revolution that come one day, and this is the revolution. The revolution's upon us! Yeah, to free all the prisoners. As Thor and Loki were trying to like, steal the ship, Loki tries to be betray Thor again, but Thor's not having that. He fell for it at so many times, this is the last time. So I think he ties him up, and then Korg finds him later, or whatever. So Thor and the others try to go through the, the portal, or uh, I'm not calling it the anus, uh, I said it. Heading towards it, also the Grandmaster, many of are trying to stop him, like, this is where we get another hearing that the background music I heard earlier, it's like a video game, it was really cool. So back on Asgard, Hela finds where the Asgardians are hiding, because like, they were like, hiding out, the Asgardian people kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller, and she wanted to know where they, they were hiding out, and then she does find out through one of them. And then that's when she finds them to like this, the cave, and they're not there. They're at the bridge already. And also, she hears somebody knocking on the somebody's in the throne room, and it's Thor. She goes like, "You're in my seat." So we get a battle between Thor and Hela. And this is like the first movie where the a woman is a villain, which is pretty cool, I think. In their battle, like Thor actually loses his eye, his his right eye, like how Odin has it. The way they do it, they show the eyeball like pop out, like she just pops out with her dagger. Like, that, that's very graphic. Like, Marvel is getting to the point of it being very graphic. Like, while the Asgardians at the Rainbow Bridge, Hela's army of the undead is coming for them and also the Scourge. Oh, whatever. That giant dog is also coming for them. And Banner is like, I have to do this. And he goes, like, to Valkyrie, like, you're going to remember what I do. And he jumps off the ship, lands on the Rainbow Bridge, like, this flat dead, which is probably not, because we obviously know as he turned it off. But it was done for comedic effect how it was like just jumped off a ship onto a bridge and it's like was rolling all over which is hilarious but also sad like that didn't plan out greatly how he did it so he turns it back into the Hulk fights that big dumb wolf and Loki and Korg show up also save the Asgardians with a giant ship for the Asgardians so as when like Hela got stored in her grip you are never the true heir to Asgard I am the true heir to Asgard I think he thought like in his mind like I guess he's talking to Odin through the afterlife. Thor tells Odin can't beat her without the hammer. And he goes like, what are you, the god of hammers? No, you're the god of thunder. And then that's when we see that it's probably the Odin force or the Thor force or whatever you want to call it. Thor unlocks his thunder power without the hammer. So I, I guess the hammer was like, kind of like a lightning rod. So this is another cool shot of Thor being cool. I like that Thor was just like just nailing everyone with his thunderness and like, hey, picking up someone's sword or whatever. Also, and walking towards one of some of them, he just released thunder on them. He could have done that to everyone, but it's just so cool. Also, during when he was talking to Odin, like through the weird spiritual force, Odin says like, Asgard is not a place, it's the people. And he also said that to Loki, he told Loki to go get Sir put him in the turtle flame so Asgard gets destroyed. And then Hela wants to rule Asgard which is like, which is two different Ragnarok. So if he destroys it, she has nothing to rule over. So perfect plan. Two negatives equal positive. So also, I think Loki steals their Tesseract. Well, he's also mischievous and likes shiny things probably. So it's obvious and also he needs to have that in Infinity War. So Thor is new king of Asgard. And also need to look for a new place for the Asgardians. I wonder if they're going to go to Norway, because, like, well, well, that's what Odin was at, and probably like that place peaceful. Asgardians is going on Earth. Hmm, interesting. But that's a nice shot, too. Like, Thor, like, in it, I guess, in it, the Grand Master, because it was a, another Grand Master ship that they stole. And you get a shot of, like, Thor, Loki, Sidem, Korg, Valkyrie, Hulk. That's a pretty cool shot. That's so, also during the end credits, we see that, like, like Ronin's ship from Guardian, but, like, it's bigger. Like, it could be Thanos' ship. The second end credits is that, um, I guess it's a reference to the Guardians, how the Grand Master and that Collector are supposed to be, like, brothers, siblings. They're elders of the universe, I think. Well, he got kicked his, like, place from, like, I guess the, the other people that he captured, and, um, this is my score from the movie. So, yeah, so Thor Ragnarok was pretty fun. Like, you didn't get that end-of-the-world type vibe. It was more like, there's an end-of-the-world type scenario, like with the Asgardians place getting destroyed, but they're going to a new place anyway. If it wasn't Taka Watiti doing this movie, how he made this movie all wacky and Jack Kirby-ish, if it was any other director, they would do that Earth story, Asgardian story, Warrior story, 
Lady Sif. She was also not in the movie because the actress had a TV show that she was filming. I think she's the main character on a TV show. So, yeah, Thor Ragnarok, the best Thor movie, probably one of the favorites of my MCU movies now. It's just really great, really colorful, really bright, really fun. Make Thor like this all the time now. Yeah, he's cool now. Thor's cool now. Like how what the Winter Soldier did with Captain America made him cool, which I, I kind of like the first Captain America, and then seeing Winter Soldier made him even cooler. And yeah, it was really great. So, what do you think of Thor Ragnarok? Please leave a comment down below, give me a like, it really helps me out, and subscribe for more. I've been Matt Bin One, and I am the Lord of Thunder, Thor! Stop! I'm pretty sick of God of Thunder. Also, Morty, did you notice that?